Broadcasting from Hollywood, California, it's Grant's Rants, Hollywood Talk. TV returns for the fall, and we dish what's catching our attention. And what is it? Pamela Anderson doesn't like dating apps, and neither do we. Lady Gaga books the Super Bowl, a potential Britney Justin song is exciting us from now, and Miley Cyrus rejects red carpets. That and more with Katrina Nicholson right here. Let the ranting begin. I'm sitting across from aspiring writer and comedian Katrina Nicholson. What's up? How's it going? <laughs> it's going. Well, we need to talk about how we know one another. Yeah. And uh, Katrina has filled, backfilled one of my positions from a previous job, one of the very many. And we just kind of hit it off, bonding <laughs> over what we know and the people and right. the politics. We've sent a lot of text messages back and forth over the last few months. Um, only the two of us really understand what yeah um, what the situation is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, anyone who's left a job, it's and many people probably don't go back and speak with their replacements. But if they did, they would know like they have a specific language and know like what they're up against and kind of fill each other in. So that's our relationship, yeah. and so we have a good time commiserating (laughs) absolutely to say the least yeah so let's talk about some fall tv real quick because the billboards are everywhere it's emmy weekend we are recording this podcast before the emmy so we won't be discussing winners because we We don't don't know know. (laughs) (laughs) but uh let's talk about what's coming out what's catching our attention and what we're planning on watching i've talked about a few of these shows before on this podcast Kind of you know checking things out uh thing i've noticed some more shows since then some other shows have turned me off since we last had this conversation so let's catch up what are you planning on watching for sure well i have zero hope for the big networks at this point i don't care anymore i'm not even going to give them a shot uh i'm mostly interested in um getting back into like netflix's stream like just streaming and mm-hmm. hbo but um, I do want to give American Horror Story another shot because I was not a fan of Hotel, even though a lot of people loved it. But this next season is something about like Roanoke. I don't even oh. know. It's a very weird hmm. concept, but I'm hoping maybe it'll turn around. You know, I've given that show a chance every season that it's been on, and I've never been able to take to it. I cannot yeah. take to that show, no matter if it's Gaga there or whoever yeah. they have on, like the cast of so many that they bring on I and paper it sounds great right but the show just doesn't it doesn't take to me and it's very long I've realized that I'm not good like made for TV movies like no. they're just like 30 minutes too long for me and yeah. like, this show oh, it's very well done it looks good I love Kathy Bates Lady Gaga interests me overall I, but I just can't seem to get into it past a handful of episodes I've never finished it it's that's the thing. I this last season I got like I think I got to episode six and so many things were happening that I didn't like. I just abandoned it altogether and it was totally right up my alley. There was this one episode that was all serial killers, like real life serial killers. And I'm obsessed with serial killers, which makes me sound like a crazy person, but I just didn't find it scary or disturbing or anything. I was just like bored by it. Mm. Which for a show that's supposed to be shocking and right. you know, I don't think you want people bored mid-season yeah so well, i just gave up i told myself this season don't bother no. i'm not gonna check it out myself at all because it's just i know it doesn't appeal to me at this point so mm-hmm. not happening right. uh something that is catching my attention you mentioned you weren't going to look at network but for the mm-hmm. nbc i want to watch this is us oh yeah i've read good things about it. it has over 90 million views on the trailer on youtube so there's a lot of buzz behind it i like buzzworthy shows oh I, for sure i think that's why i like reality tv so much on the housewives because it's like one little thing happens, and yeah. like, you know, there's all these blogs about it, and I enjoy talking about it. So this show, I read a great article about it. I think I want to say it was Entertainment Weekly, and they gave a little excerpt blurb, like like a little first look at it, and they said there's no explosions, there's no superheroes, it's just straight up drama, and I'm like, that's what I'm looking yeah. for. It's you missing know? right now, yeah. honestly. It's so superhero heavy. Yeah, it's the trend right now. Yeah. I'm even over it. If, even if it was a little soapy, I like like I loved a Desperate Housewives. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I'd be fine if I love a little over the top. But now everything is really based in uh, reality, not necessarily reality TV, but 
real things slash these combat it slash these superhero movements mm-hmm. slash the son of Zorn. <laughs> What right. the hell? Is I'm like, I'm like so <laughs> angry at this. Like I made a Snapchat the other day, and I was like, absolutely not. I just don't get it. Not. I just see the billboard, and I'm like, because it's right by my house. Oh, so every yeah. time I'm coming back from the gym, I'm like, what? I don't. What is it? Like I just can't. No. I just I just see the the cartoon character with this family, and I don't know what to make of it. I think it's very Fox. Like, if yeah. it's going to be on any network, it's like, yeah, it's, like, good for them. But, I mean, who knows? Well, I, I don't give that very long. No. I don't. <laughs> and nothing on ABC. I don't give much of anything too long over there. They know it. Everybody knows it. It's... That show, Speechless, is another show that's not happening. Not no. here, anyway. I'm not watching no. that because I don't care for Minnie Driver playing the oh, same role. Oh, my. I don't need her on my TV screen. I just don't. I don't she, need her on any screen anymore. She just plays the same type of role. Which she's an angry, but she's a very angry character. Just always. Like, always upset. I'm like, I don't, I don't need that. No. I'm not I, interested. That's not why I tune in. I don't need to yes. listen to you. I yeah. just don't. Does anyone feel like maybe ABC, is their comedy department, is just... Toning in on all these minority groups. Oh my gosh! It was you know? that. It was that. The mandates, like, like I want to say, like last year, it was all like we need a diverse, like we need a different perspective. We need like minority perspective, which is great. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. Right. But they went like so far in that direction that it's almost more offensive. <laughs> I, I'm like I like. I don't want to I go mean, anywhere yeah. near it. I mean, they've got the the uh, the middle, which I love, and the and. Oh, uh, I hate the middle. Really? Oh my <laughs> god, it's not funny. Uh-huh. Uh, the middle and Modern Family, which I'm done with Modern Family entirely. But though that's like okay, that's like fits white bracket. Then right. there's blackish. Ugh. Then there's the show Speechless, which represents the, the, the sick and the disabled. Then there was that Christella. They did. Oh to make my that happen. god! Yeah. Wasn't there fresh off the boat? Is that right, done? That's still there. Yeah. That's still there. Yeah. So they've definitely, like, and I'm all for diversity right. in television, but it definitely also seems to me like ABC Studios is just like, all right, what's the next subculture <laughs> slash ethnicity that we can oh. exploit? They're desperate. They're just desperate. I they just, are finding success for the most part. I mean, so. they have a pretty good unscripted, I mean, they have Bachelor, which... It somehow remains relevant. No, you're never going to top it. It's never, yeah. nothing will top it ever. It rates so well. And Dancing with the Stars. Oh my, no. I can't talk about that. Season, we're, in, we're in season, what, 21, 22 of that? I mean, I'm all for unscripted. Like, I'm there for Same. it. It's fine. But uh, that American Idol, I just never... But my mom loves it. it. It's like what our parents are watching. Right, it's because right. they're the only ones still tuning in. Yeah. The only I'm, ones who still have cable. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be looking at Scream Queens. I've talked mm. about Scream Queens a lot on this show. Love Scream Queens. It's really over the top, and the cast. I love it. The cast now is going to be even bigger than last season, which was already a lot. Yeah. Um. So Kirst, Kirstie Alley is joining oh, the good. show, and this is her first Ryan Murphy show, which is a surprise. That to me, is because I think huh. she would like. She's great for that. Like she she's is tailor made for that. Minus the Scientology, love you some Kirstie. We'll just Alley. pretend there's no Scientology <laughs> attached to that. Yes, John Stamos, who doesn't like oh, him? Oh my God, he's a great guy too. I actually met him when I was interning. He was so nice. I believe it. He it, seems like he's paid his dues in this business. Absolutely. Very lucky. Yeah. Genuinely good person. You don't see that very often. Good. I like to hear that. Yeah. No. Always affirming. And Taylor Lautner, who hasn't really had a career. Yeah. Before. What happened to him? Yeah. It's Twilight, and then. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. Nothing relevant. He dated Taylor Swift for a minute, and then... Oh, I forgot. That was that. a while ago, though. That was like Twilight Days, when he was relevant, and she could use him for yeah. her publicity. Well, we wish all the shows luck, but who the hell knows how long they're going to last. <laughs> Good luck. Let me... I always go back to, like, The Muppets last season. Oh, my God. What happened? It opened really well. Then yeah. it dropped, and then it literally just never, ever heard from it again. Like, it would be just... Like, it was just eliminated. So, I don't know. These shows, it's like... I'm waiting for the press releases, like, most watched show yeah, on a Wednesday yeah. night. Uh, four weeks later, <laughs> never heard a race. Nothing. Like, literally, like, abc.com slash the Muppets, allegedly, I'm kidding, but, like, right. not even a page. You know what I mean? I know. I don't understand it. It's yeah. just, I mean, this business is changing. It's, in, and a lot of people are in denial about it. It's just hard yeah. to make things stick. I think, for the most part, a lot of these shows should just remain picked up because yeah. they... The audience that they've got is there, whether it's, unless if it's pulling in like 
you know, like some like pre like some like distant cable network numbers, like I don't know, like those random channel like yeah, yeah. pull out. But like the science channel, for example. Oh, yeah. Unless if it's getting something <laughs> like that. Like at this point, I, I don't know what they're expecting I don't to know. replace these shows. I, don't I really know. don't. I, I would I mean, especially the ones that do have the cult following that you can demonstrate yeah. and then they just they just give up on them. I don't right. know. I I mean, it's the, the I think the rating system is broken, but that's a whole other conversation. Oh, yeah. That's been so busted forever. If yeah. you're measuring based on that system, you're never going to be happy with the results. Right. It's just not accurate. It doesn't reflect anything that most twenty somethings yeah. are watching. So, for what I'm hearing and reading and working on, it's all SVOD focused anyway yeah. at this point. So it's like the ratings are what they are but so when do you decide what at this point now when you fact when you factor in an international audience like there has to be so much into taking into scope of how to cancel and why to cancel yeah. a show so it's interesting and we'll see what happens this fall season yeah fingers crossed yeah well let's talk a little bit about left her and pamela anderson oh. <laughs> who has an 18 year old son and she's very involved in his dating life good and she rec- I like her. I think she looks I, good. Do I like? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like her. I don't hate. I for some reason I'm just like I'm like what do I know about Pamela Anderson? And then I just flash back to when she's in. Uh, I think she's in Scary Movie three or something at the beginning, and she's just like it's like her and I think Jenny McCarthy. Am I oh, right? A winning duo. I know, and they're like, well, they're like at home, and then it, it, you know it's a parody of The Ring, and oh, they're yeah, getting yeah. these phone calls, and it's like. <laughs> the creepy voice and I, I I thought she was really funny so that's my instinct that's, your, that's yes. my that's my frame of reference which is probably not a normal frame of reference for Pamela Anderson yeah but we'll go with that well she tell, tells her son I tell him not to do those stupid dating apps which he doesn't thank God I tell him just meet someone in the street and get a connection it's human contact oh well it's a different type of world now. the world we're living in now I can't even begin to describe the dating game that it's a game nobody knows the rules to right what's your experience been like in la dating oh wise? my god so i have been single since like what march of this of this year i think and i was like all right let's do the apps fuck it like might as well and i downloaded all of them i had tinder bumble coffee meets bagel that okay, I, well, I won't even have that on my phone I, I think that's the stupidest name I saw that on Shark Tank it was like right? that's not it's happening. actually the word oh, well the weird, that one is just desperate like if I had to describe it in one word it's oh, just really? very desperate um, I did not I never met anybody off of that one uh, and then I had Hinge for a little bit and it was also just a bit I didn't get very many there wasn't enough people on it so oh, yeah. but Bumble and Tinder were the ones I used the most um, and I met like quite a few guys from both of those and (laughs) it was just so bad because the problem is that because these apps because everybody's using them everybody knows that all they need to do to find another girl well all the guys do Mm -hmm. they all they need to do to find another girl is just keep swiping so they don't really have any patience for anybody and i'm not like an easy girl to date like i don't really just sit there and I, i guess i say a lot more than i probably should early on so <laughs> I think I scared away a lot of uh, a lot of my potential matches, but it's also sort of one of those things where I knew pretty early on that it wasn't going to be anything serious. So I just kind of strung it along because I was bored. Yeah. Because I mean, it is interesting. It, you can they're really, great for when you're bored. Yeah, they're yeah. great for when you're bored. And like I, I know at the beginning it was like fun for my friends and I because I would have like a date every weekend. I would have one Friday and one Saturday, and then like. They would all know about it. And at one point, <laughs> I was dating three guys with the same name. So we oh. numbered. Yeah, they were all. Well, I don't want to say the name because if any of them are like listening, but we had like them a numbering system. But then once we got into like once I, some of them I saw again. So we had to like find new nicknames for them just because just to make it yeah. easier. <laughs> but um, now every guy that I've dated has a nickname and usually a pretty offensive one. Oh, um, okay, that we just yeah. it's easier to refer to them that way, you know, like oh yeah, the Did guy they know this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but one time one of them was in the car and I was like driving to my house and I was on the speakerphone with my cousin and I was like, yeah, me and uh, blah, blah, blah are coming back. He's like, oh, is that K1? <laughs> I'm like, shh, it's not, nope, not the right guy. <laughs> like, completely wrong. Uh, well, it sounds like you found some success with dating anyway. I mean, like, it's not hard 
to get guys to go out with you. It's just hard to find ones that aren't fucking idiots. Yeah. It's like a 90% of the time, it, like I realize they're not listening to me, to listening to anything I say about like 10 minutes in and I just start like, all right, like what are we doing here? What are we, what are we even trying to do? Yeah. And I just, I don't even really want anything right now. I'm too busy. Like I'm playing in like four co-ed football leagues now. Wow. I yeah. know it's, still, I'm, I mean, I shouldn't be like, it's definitely like I'm overextending myself, but um, I don't even know when the fuck I would go on a date anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tell me about that. Right. I don't know. Yeah. No. My, what's your, been, what's my, your experience? My experience is nothing. It's yeah. like, you know, to, to get anyone to actually commit to taking the time to meet, to do anything, it, you know, it's like, you know, all tentative plans right. that never come to fruition. Right. So it's nothing. I, to me, the whole thing is a waste of my energy. It really is. I, and I, but the problem that I found is that what's the alternative? Now that I don't have any of the apps, right. I'm like, how am I, how do I go? What do I, how do I talk to guys? Yeah. And I, like when I'm at the bar, I'm like, I don't even know where to start. That's true. I don't know how to talk to anybody out and like that, how to like broach a conversation. Because we don't know how we, we never learned. Yeah. It's our generation. It's, so true. it's crazy. I mean, the only guys that approach me are the guys that I'm desperately hoping won't approach me. And then I have to be a bitch and then that's always the case and then it's like yep. then we all complain about each other not wanting to date each other and yeah. it's it's funny because it's everybody has the same conversation with their friends i have it with my yeah. friends outside of la always. wherever and we all are just really seriously looking but yet no one's connecting on that level no everyone you talk to is looking for the same thing yet no one is at no, the same time absolutely not I, I don't think any of the guys i've been on dates with were looking for anything serious and I don't think any of the guys I've been on dates with, I was looking for anything serious with them. They're yeah. crazy. I'm working. I'm, I'm, I'm busy. It's just... That's how I look at Yeah, you have to be really fucking awesome for me to be like, yeah, I'm going to spend the two hours of free time I have every other day talking to you. I also don't want to text you. I just want you to leave me alone. <laughs> like, That's true. Yeah. Do you get that texting game too? I just don't uh, well, want to yeah. do it. The majority of people that I've encountered do not work. At least they don't work they normal hours. So it's like, you know, they, they're expecting these responses and all this. I mean, it's like, no. No. I, and that's even with like friends too. Right. You know, like I'm like, I'm busy. Like I'm working. Like I don't want to tell you. Like it's, it's just easier not to set that standard of, Getting back to people very quickly. No. And I mean, also, 90% of the Can't. time, it's like them saying things I just don't care about. So yeah. I just have no incentive yeah. to respond. So right. I'm just going to leave it. Now, I know you wanted to talk about Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. And are you so not football? Are you hating, do you not, hate football? I don't watch. I don't have a television right now. Okay. I don't watch anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I've managed to find my reality TV time, but right. that's about it right now. This is super so, hypocritical of me, though, because football's happening right now, and I'm not. I don't even want to watch though, because I have seven fantasy football teams, and oh my god, I know so this I have is a really problem. Awful. It's my thing. I don't know what happened. It's just become like I'm obsessed. Well, no, there's a way to meet guys. Right? You'd think that. But guys think they want to date a girl who is into football. But then in actuality, when a guy is with me and notices that I'm almost more into that than they am, and I'm or sorry, that I'm almost more into it than they are, and I might know a little bit more than they do, it's like, ew, I don't want that. That's not, that's not fun. I want you to sit there and cheer for my team. Like, uh, the, in reality, they think they want a girl who's into football. They just want a girl to be into football on their terms. So. Yeah. No, not mm. it's not as easy as I thought it would be. But yes. this is relevant now. Right. Well, this story has been everywhere. This player of the 49ers didn't stand for the national anthem. It's been related to him. What, what, what's, why did he do it? So it's film again. I, I, as I'm far up as on I, it, but only so far. So as far as I'm aware, it's because he's protesting like police brutality, right. the Black Lives Matter movement, which yeah. I think it's a great platform to use or it's a great it's it's so nice to see something positive coming out of the NFL but the backlash on it has been ridiculous like people were like that's so disrespectful to our troops and whatever that's fine if you think that but it's a peaceful protest mm-hmm. it's a very harmless way to protest by someone who's a huge public figure yeah i mean there's no law he's not breaking a law no. it's encouraged but there's nothing that he's doing really 
that's awful and no. blasphemous. I can understand both sides of the argument. Now, yeah. I will say this man is creating quite a conversation yeah. across all platforms. Absolutely. From like ESPN to regular news to across all blogs. Yeah. Uh, constantly in my Facebook feed. Yep. Um, so, I mean, and if it's coming, if it's trickling right. to me, right. white man who doesn't watch football, yeah. then it's, <laughs> it's really creating a conversation. Well, other players are joining in. And other huge players, like Arian Foster, another huge running back, um, he kneeled too, and it's been. And I was like, yes, thank God, like I'm so happy. And then, and a couple other a Broncos player also kneeled, and his sponsors dropped him. Like his, he lost sponsorship deals because of it. And it was like, are you serious? Like, mm. I don't know. I, I kind of understand. You do have to take a stance on it, and if your brand is not really adjacent to that kind of movement, then yeah, okay, whatever, drop your sponsorship. But I still think like. Because he kneeled during the national anthem and like is standing by a movement that's extremely relevant right now, especially in the midst of a presidential election. Like Mm -hmm. you, it's so important. And if these guys are bringing attention to it, then why are we going to punish them for it? It's peaceful protesting. It's peaceful. Like it's it's not hurting anybody. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. As a white man, there's nothing I can right. really say in a way against <laughs> you know. for this situation. Just what Chris Brown, lo- oh. loser extraordinaire, Jeez. he was at uh, a charity basketball game, and he didn't stand for it either, but he sat slouched in the corner, and I'm like, you know what? Nothing he does makes a damn difference anyway. He's not. He probably doesn't even know the reason no, why. No, he. I'm sure he doesn't. He's I, a crazy person. He's like such a loser. And it's it's a shame. Why didn't I we give up on him him. him earlier? I'm so annoyed that he's still like culturally relevant because he's just a disgusting human being. Terrible person. Whatever. So yeah. So Chris Brown is behind the movement, which probably doesn't help. Do, I don't think so. <laughs> what they're trying to do. Nope. Yeah. So later in the season, though, the season just began, right? Like, Football? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just began last week. Yeah. So if you're already waiting for it to be over. Oh, shut well, up. <laughs> then you can not. <laughs> Let us have our fun. Yes. <laughs> then you can look forward to the Super Bowl, which is always a big deal. Always. Uh, Lady Gaga is going to be the headliner. I don't know who else is performing with her. It's probably all going to be rumors up until, mm-hmm. like, January. But what do you think? Okay, so I actually, now that I'm thinking about it, Katy Perry was an amazing halftime show. I could see Lady Gaga having a similar halftime show. Like I'm she surprised can, she hasn't done it. Yet. I actually thought she already did. That was what I was thinking about. So this is, I mean, I love her old stuff. I'm kind of into her new song. Have you heard it? I've heard it, and it's just not for me. It's just not, I mean... I just feel like her new stuff hasn't been quite as good as the old stuff, but I'm not gonna. I'm. I still listen, and I'm still a fan. Um, but like, yeah. what? I just. I, I. I can see it going one of two ways. It could be totally like Katy Perry nailed it. Everyone has great throwback moments because you don't realize yeah. how many of their songs you know until they start playing all of them. Right. Which was the that case. was like me with like Selena Gomez. Yeah. I was like, oh, I she did that too. I forgot yeah. about that one. Yeah. yeah. And I think it could be. It could have value in that and she probably will make it look weird right. too like she'll come in like suspended from something I hope so because I miss that version of God I know I do miss that and I feel like she'll do it for the Super Bowl she's definitely going to do something weird I hope so I really do How this you... is great for her to promote her new album and yeah. all that with her album well the album will be long out by then but she said in an, now Us Weekly has yes. said that they've confirmed this but she said before this announcement when she was asked about doing it she said that she would absolutely be interested and that she would uh she mentioned bringing in her album collaborators mark ronson florence florence welsh oh i love i would love it florence welsh and people love beck so yeah but there's certain people that just don't carry a halftime show and it's the energy's not there she has the energy the other People you just mentioned, yeah. questionable. Right. See, I like Edie. Yeah, like I oh, want like some Stephen O. E. to come on. That would like, be that's nuts. The halftime show. That would be you nuts. Know? Like that's what I want to see. If they're ever gonna do that, this would be the year too. Don't you think? If they're gonna bring in like Calvin Harris or something? Did yeah. They, did, yeah. Like, I would. Oh, that would be awesome. Thanks Her with that. them? That would be sweet. Yeah. Well, you never know who's gonna pop. Up. Right. It could, I mean, could Missy Elliott popped up. That was oh, awesome. Wow, that too. was great. Yeah. We have plenty of time, so yes, you know, figure it out. Make it work for us. Let's talk about something completely different. Yeah. <laughs> These topics are all over the place. They really are. This singer songstress, Britney Spears. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, have you listened to the new album? 
lightly. Okay. Lightly, but I don't know what I think of it, so... Ugh. I mean, <laughs> like, I love Britney. She can really do no wrong. Yes. But just... I don't know. What do you think of it? Well, I kind of last episode I went in in, uh, in a very good way. I mean, I'll never say anything bad against it. I'm card carrying Britney fan. Love it. Love the album. Like you know, of course there are a few songs on there that I can live without. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm totally fine with it. I'm glad that she's she's on the scene. But the whole thing has made me feel kind of old. Yeah, I feel you that know? too. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm being her for Halloween. I think. Oh really? Yeah, we're doing. Uh, I think my friends and I are gonna do. Like, we're going to do a group costume. We're all going to be different Britneys. Oh, I must see a photo of Oh, this. absolutely. Because one of... That. It's me and two guys. So... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one of them... He has his head shaved, so he's going to be, like... Oh, head shaved Britney. Oh, seven. Oh, yeah. eight Britney. Okay. Disaster Britney. And I might be Snake Britney. Good one. Uh, yeah, if you Iconic, mean. as yeah, always. I know. So I'm going to have to, like, make sure my body's in shape. <laughs> I don't know what the third guy is going to be, but... It's gonna be. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love the idea. So I'm, I'm all for the album. But there's this whole back and forth, and it's a positive thing with, with who she would like to collaborate with, who she would like to, to perhaps. I am saying duet because I'm being hopeful. But she did mention Justin, and of course we know their past. Everyone still. All the card carrying Britney fans always hold out hope that those two might result yeah, in something. The um, dream. I don't really care for Justin Timberlake's current music. No. I will say no. It's not my type of thing. Like Justin and the Tennessee Five or whoever he's with. It's just uh, the 2020 experience was just not for me. Yeah. No, I 100 percent agree yeah. with that. I, know, I, tend I wasn't to, a fan. I tend to not like men that sing in falsetto for whatever reason. Fair. You know, so it's like whatever, but. He, no doubt, is great still star power, and she's wonderful, and by her writing his coattails of that yeah. song, would really help her. Yeah, yeah. I don't think him doing anything with her would really help him, because I think not. he's like a step above her. Unfortunately, yes. Yes. For better or worse. Yeah, for better or worse. I'm on the same page, yeah. Yeah. So I think that they should definitely do it. Of course, you know, we probably won't see anything come of this no. for a long time. No. Uh, and... I don't know. I wonder how Jessica Biel feels about it, but Ugh. he why are they together? I'm just he says he would absolutely be down for it, and his the expression on his face when E News asked him, he was like taken aback, like almost like an old friend was asking about you. Yeah, you know what I yeah, mean? and I love that. Yeah. They were real, such a great '90s thing. Yeah, and that picture of them in the denim outfits. Gosh, like, another you iconic just can't, moment. You can't get that out of your head. Yes, <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yes, what a great relationship. So I, I hope that it comes. I would. Together. Yeah, I yes. agree. I'm yes. a fan of that. Professional gay Lance Bass said that it would break the internet. It would. So I'm. I'm and I love sorry. Lance Bass too. So <laughs> maybe all of Insync should get in on this. Have you looked at that show Finding Prince Charming? By the way, no. It's what is Lance, this? It's, it's, a, it's a gay bachelor show. Oh, I love with, it. With Lance Bass hosting. Oh but, yeah. Uh, what hosting? network? Logo mm. uh, hosting used loosely, <laughs> like more like you know, like here Lance memorize this paragraph and then spit it out. Is he in on it? Like, is he in on the game? No, he's just the host. That would be awesome. <laughs> it's like, who wants to date Lance Bass? Well, he's married. Oh, is he? Yeah. To who? I don't know. Oh, all right. I don't know. I did not know that. Yes. But uh, another star, we can take another turn here. Um, Miley Cyrus. I love her. Yeah, me too. She, I, do you see her on the Today Show? I haven't. She was on there with, promoting The Voice and a movie she's in with Woody Allen. Oh, I hate Woody Allen, and I'm really annoyed that that's happening. But oh. <laughs> I mean, everyone should hate Woody Allen. He's yeah. disgusting. But Miley Cyrus is saying she's done with all red carpets. And I was like, well, wait a minute. What kind of like protest is this now? You know, what kind of noise is she trying to make? However, she explained her stuff on the Today Show, and it made sense to me. She said that it's not about women. No, she said it is about women. And yeah. it's like we get yelled at. And yeah, we she's been beaten to, up. Yeah. She's been beaten up so badly by we, press. We get asked to blow them a kiss. We don't even know who these people are. Like, it's like, and I, I've seen a few of these. The larger scale carpets, like the Emmys, the Golden Globes, or one thing, it's pretty respectable. The outlets there, you know, you've got Vanity Fair, you, yeah. know, you know, Access Hollywood, very respectable outlets. But some of these smaller carpets, it's, from my experience only, it's just been like questionable. They they stand there and even with the, even on the MTV Movie Awards or so when Britney or and VMAs when Britney showed up, um, you know that's like very like a step ab- like above catcalling you know yeah it's like over here 
C- come on, stick your leg out. Look here, you need to turn right. It's, turn right. Like, give us that smile. Show us the that. Le- show us that yeah. leg. It's very it's like disgusting. It's gross. I don't like, know how they put up with it. Who would want to be spoken to like that? No one. Yeah. It's. I mean, but how? This is how long it's taken to address that. That's really. I ma- it makes me mad. Yeah. And it's like Alicia Keys wears no makeup to a red carpet, and everyone is kind of. I feel like people were offended by it. What? I just don't even. I don't understand anymore. Like, yeah. What do you expect from us? It's too much. Right. And I mean, I, I love Miley Cyrus for the fact that she is sort of androgynous too. And she, yeah, she's, she's very fluid. She's not putting up with shit. And I, I love her for it. Yeah. I mean, she's had a rough go of it too. Yeah. It's been <laughs> these past few years. I mean, she was kind yeah. of out of the tabloids for a while too. It was, she was quiet and now I'm glad she's back. Right. I'm glad to see her back talking about things because I think she has so much potential to actually help feminism too. Yeah. Because she definitely is. I think the whole red carpet experience is as fake as it gets. Oh, yeah. And you really have to be confident to work that because if you... It's like basically stepping with a bunch of lights on a screen, you know, with in front of a screen, you're, you know, full display. You're expected to look perfect. Oh, yeah. And then there's a bunch of cameras and people eat strangers you don't know who who know you and act like they know you and call your name so if you're not going out there with the utmost confidence it's easy to crumble absolutely i don't question wiley's confidence but i do understand where she's coming from for sure it's really kind of a gross experience it's something that you're either made for and you're into or you're not maybe more women will also join her that's my hope is that maybe we can completely change how this whole thing yeah. works, but I, uh, there's no hope. Yeah. Like, what's <laughs> Go online and look up someone that you l- enjoy, a woman, arriving at an award ceremony. Perhaps we'll see it with Live from the Red Carpet yep. uh, this weekend, and, and of course, all the awards coming down the pipe. Yep. Um, and just, just listen and have, see how you would reply and respond to something like that. I would just get angry i know i would get angry and punch a camera or something or just like push someone over but i probably have a little bit too much testosterone (laughs) so i could maybe do it like a a little bit but when you have to go down these car a lot of these carpets are very long yeah yeah very long so it's like you have to put up with that all the way down no yeah no no over it yeah so i can understand where she's coming from i thought it was just at, for attention at first like no. I don't want to be exploited as a woman <laughs> but now I get it like yeah I, I can see where she's coming from everything is sort of a PR move though with these people anyway so you have we to never really you never us. know if it's genuine yeah you never know you're listening to Grant's Rants please rate subscribe and share on iTunes and social media spread the word there are a lot more rants to come Follow us on Twitter at Grants underscore underscore Rants. And now for the one-on-one. And we're back talking with Katrina Nicholson. No, it's funny. You mentioned to me earlier that you would describe your current career as a series of unfortunate events. Yeah, I would definitely describe it as such. Uh, Should I give the rundown? Yeah, let's talk about it. So you've been working in the world of unscripted. Unfortunately. I mean, I don't... Not unfortunately, but yes, it's... Not by not by choice either. It's really? just sort of yeah. No, I wanted I do I want to be in scripted comedy. So I just got a little derailed looking for jobs and being sort of desperate for jobs as yeah to well, get out of very normal yeah. yeah. Um, first job actually like was very lucky because I got to basically skip the whole PA phase and just be an assistant right away. But nobody trained me, so it was sort of a crash course where. You just kind of, and if you don't know how to be an assistant and you just sit on a desk and you get all these emails about scheduling, you're like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And my boss was used to having really experienced assistants who knew everything and could do a hundred things at once, which I figured out I can do, but like... It takes a learning curve. It's a learning curve and it kills you inside. Like I did that for my first year out here. I was, I had like, I had one job and I was getting paid, like I was getting paid minimum wage. Um... And was doing the role of, like, ten people, which is typical. Typical. Um, yeah. And I was sort of told that after that first year, they would help me, which is another typical thing. Mm-hmm. My boss would help me out. The year comes. Oh, well, you're not ready to move on. You're not prepared to go. I can't recommend you at this stage. So I was like, okay, that's fine that you think that. I'm leaving. I'm not staying. That's yeah. Forget it. You like I don't know. I was 
I didn't think there was ever going to be a time where I was going to be ready in her opinion. So I was like, I'm going to do this myself. Um, <laughs> the next job turned out to be so much worse. Uh, I ended up working at this company that is notorious for being cutthroat, abusive, basically just horrible human beings throughout. Mm -hmm. um, and I was working for the CEO. I was assisting oh, the sorry. CEO. The top of a pile of crap. Yeah. yeah. Oh, to say the least, to say the mm -hmm. least. Um, and, you know, the girl who left the position before me left crying, quit with a sticky note. She just walked oh, out, wow. left a sticky note. She couldn't even face her boss, and, which was the woman I was going to work for. Wow. She, it was this huge dramatic thing. So... You know, it's not uncommon to have these people walk out of positions. No, it's not. It's, and it doesn't yeah. affect anything. No, it doesn't change anything. No. This is the reality of working at a production company or somewhere that's not corporately structured because oh. you're, just, you're just not responsible. No. You know, they're, they're not responsible for you. And they had, there's no loyalty, period. None. They had zero respect for their employees. And... This girl walked out crying, and I was like, okay, well, you've left me with... The, she left me with this enormous assistant Bible. I shit you not. This was... It was this binder that, like, I, I couldn't even pick up, like, with... It was so big. And I was like, what did I get myself into? And then I quickly found out that that assistant position was basically a revolving door where, like, the, even my email name changed. Like, every time I would send an email, it was like, oh, who's this person? Who's this person? There's a new name. Oh. And, and you, oh, that's a bad sign. If you ever get into a job and you see that the, the name, because, well, first of all, if the name is assistant at blah, 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 you already know they're not going to give you your email because they know you might quit right away. Yeah. And then if you, so, like, shortly after realize that that name keeps changing, you're, you're fucked. Like you've mm -hmm. you've gotten into a desk that nobody wants. Yeah. So I, it did not take me long to realize that this woman was batshit crazy. She, she was a sociopath. She would text me at like three a.m. on a Saturday, and expect me to do something for her within minutes. Yeah. Give it, me unpaid vacation and still have me work, like. It's and it's normal. Legit scary though when you're looking for jobs on a desk. And you've heard of the name of the production company. Yep. You know what they produce. You go on their website. And you just don't know if these are pitfall positions. And right. And a lot of times they are. It's so frustrating. And you don't know until it's too late. Yep. You do really don't know. And that's the hardest part is that then you're like, well, what do I do? Do I stay on this desk and keep suffering and try to put my time in? Or do I bail immediately? And I... The thing with this position was that she was known for firing people right away, but somehow I was, I guess, competent mm -hmm. enough that I lasted six months, I think. She never fired me. Like, I, I had to quit by the end of it. I, she drove mm -hmm. me insane. It was one of those jobs you just never escaped yeah. from. Mm -hmm. It was like you'd leave the office, but did you really leave the office? Like, I would get insulting texts the minute I would get back to my house, and it was like me and uh, my coworker, because the company is owned by husband and wife, and we were assisting she assisted the husband i assisted the wife and we would get pulled into these marital battles and it was like i'm yeah. i'm 20 i was 22 or 23 years old i was not equipped to handle no a desk was flipped to. a desk was flipped in an office it broke in half like it was oh. yeah oh yeah like papers were thrown this place was mm. what you see on like I don't even I don't even know how it, yeah. I don't even know if you could write yeah. the stuff that happened in this office. It We're was spilling secrets in the industry on yeah. the show. I mean yeah. that's I mean I could go all day with it. I had no I give zero fucks about this place. Yeah. Um that's then I escaped. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's so awful though to be put in that's where you have to go five days a week. And we're not talking like a nine to five job here. No, no. These jobs go on all. You're expected to be on call. You're there. Lunches are not. You don't encouraged. have lunch. Yeah. You don't get a so lunch. So it's really like your life. It like, is. This is it. So that that feeling that you have dread you get on a Sunday night, times that by a little bit more, and that's what it's like to work for some of these companies. Oh, absolutely. A lot of them, like especially in unscripted, I'd say is I think for some reason the unscripted world is a bit more cutthroat because they produce what they produce for cheaper so they you yeah. know they're just a little bit more feisty right. yeah and a lot of these people come from the field yep. so they're not yep. used to working with like laws and labor oh and they like still don't corporate structure like they literally come off of a set 
And then they're like, all right, I'm gonna, I am successful producing such and such a show. Let's create our own production company. Exactly. So they pull the producers that they've worked with for the last like six years and they finance a production company. So there's no like suits. Nope. You know, and if there are any, because a lot of these production companies are owned by much larger companies, they're just like subsidiaries. There's really no presence no. of a large company. There's no corporate structure whatsoever. Yeah. And that's where you end up getting abused because there's yeah. nothing to protect you. Yeah. That was I mean, everyone's had different experiences, but this has been my experience as well as yours. Yeah. So this is just where we are coming yeah, from. Yeah, we're just you know? we're not trying to speak for the whole industry as right. far as this, but this is our experience. I mean, you know me. I'm going to be as honest as I can be. I uh, can't help it. But yeah. Yeah, we're both going to be. <laughs> yeah. So this is just like, it is what it is, and it is what it is. But that's what I mean at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened next? Okay. So I did end up getting into a bigger company, which was exactly what I needed. I was at Shine America, and they were in the process of merging with Endemol. So I actually got there. The merger was announced. I got there. And, like, I want to say two weeks after I got there, they cut so many people from the company. Like, it was a, it was a mass firing. And I, I made it because my boss made it. She was, like, high up, very valued. And so we made it past that first cut. And it was just an extremely odd time to join this company. Everyone was miserable because everything was changing. I think they were all very happy when it was just Shine America, but it was really... Oh, I'm, t- I'm name dropping. It's fine. That's fine. It's whatever. It's... Everything's fine now. I mean, I'm not there anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I tried to get many jobs at Shine. It, I, could, I could was, never really get... I went on a few interviews, but no one did me any favors over there. It's a good company. It was a great company. Yeah. Before. I was very happy with it. Like It was the first time there was an HR department. That was the first company I ever yeah. had an HR department in... They were like paying me for overtime and like that was a normal. I know, job. and she wouldn't text me outside of work hours, and I was like, it was shocking. It was like very. It was so nice. It was such a welcoming change. It was still a really tough desk. Tons of emails, tons of calls. Like I actually had to learn how to use the phone system that made sense. Um, and you know, I stayed on that desk for maybe like five or six months, and then an uh, unscripted development coordinator role opened up, and then I was like, I want to get in development, and I was lucky enough to, my bosses, because I was working under two um, British, a man and a woman, and they Mm -hmm. were just awesome people, and I interviewed with them, and we just clicked, and then they hired me, I left that desk, and then I did unscripted development for, I think, six months, so much fun, Really weird, yeah. very strange, <laughs> but... Yeah. Um, what happened? Uh, well, so, like I said, it was a merger, Endemol Shine, yeah. and they had a, several rounds of layoffs, and okay. we were actually... So my the development department I worked in was sort of the Shine team, and then there was an Endemol team of development, and basically what ended up happening is there's a lot of redundant positions, so they cut my position, and then, then I was... Then I went to New Zealand. <laughs> I was like, all right, fine. I have no job. Um, yeah, great time to spend thousands on New Zealand. <laughs> oh, wow. No, I didn't spend thousands. I'm just kidding. I, didn't, I don't have thousands to spend. See, I do regret not having any international travel. Yeah. Because I had transferred. So that I felt like that was my study abroad. Right. Because I would stay throughout the summer and sometimes through the winter and take classes. So I would graduate on yep. time. You know, less debt, less time yeah. out of work. Like, great call. All that. But I definitely regret not being able to travel at all. It was the best and I decision. still haven't because once you start working and you yeah. have these types of jobs yep. and you get paid so little, you can't be like, oh, I'm going on a two-week trip. I mean, no. All right, well, you won't You're be going fired. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. fired. Good luck yeah. with that. Even if they tell you you have like two weeks paid vacation, you know you don't have two yeah. weeks paid vacation. Like you At know- these companies, yeah. yeah. At these smaller companies, yeah. yeah. No, mm-hmm. it's absolutely not true. So now I'm in a small production company, the one that we both- Yes, Backfeld's my role over there, which is not an easy company to work for from my own experience. So um, what can you say? I'm what going crazy. I honestly don't know what to do anymore. It's just this industry is like killing my soul. Yeah. It's cutthroat, man. It's just like I'm from Minnesota where people are friendly all the time. And I went home like a couple weekends ago and the cashier was really nice to me. And I was just like, I'm just this is not a concept that I'm used to anymore in LA no one is friendly to you unless they want something from you so you just get conditioned to that and it's it's a scary place one thing I will say in the position that you're holding now outside of that if someone did a favor for me that I didn't have to figure out or something was presented to me it was like 
I couldn't wrap my mind around it. It was it was like I would get emotional about certain things. Yes. Because you're just not used to anything coming easy. Let's nope. just say that. No, nothing will. And like my yeah, sometimes when people do something really nice for me, I actually like do get emotional. Also, my eyes will start watering because I'm like you. <laughs> what do I have to do yeah. now? Like, what am I? This is gonna come back to bite me. And yeah. it's like, it's yep. that's just a messed up culture we've it is. created. So when do you say enough is enough? Like I had that's to devise a I had to devise a real plan, and it took a ton of work, but I was able to move on in my with my life, and things are much better. But it's like, yeah, when at what point? Because I I don't work and I'm right. scripted currently, and I'm fine not no. doing that. I'm I, fine not doing that. I don't want to work in unscripted anymore. Honestly, I this last I just I needed a job, so it was like I'll take anything I can get, and yeah. I and I've been looking outside, and it's just hard. It's just these positions are so sought after. Like I interviewed for some I interviewed for some jobs that I was so excited for, like some companies I would have killed to work at. I would have actually not minded working like 60 hour weeks working weekends because that was the place I wanted to be and that's the place I wanted to move up if it was the right company I would kill myself for it I would do whatever it takes but I just haven't gotten to that place where I found a place that I know it will if I put in the work then it'll be rewarded so I guess my I'm at a point now I don't even know what I want to do like I think I would rather pursue stand-up on the outside Mm -hmm. and then bust my ass in a assistant role because it's just been my experience just hasn't been good. It's just, people will tell you, like, every time you have this new boss, they'll say, you do right by me, I'll do right by you. And then you do right by them and just watch as you, the floor falls out from underneath you and then you're blacklisted on their in, in their mind. So, right. well, sick of it. <laughs> I don't blame you. Let's talk about the stand-up. The stand-up world. Yeah. How is that? That's an outlet for you. It's actually a great outlet. Um, I took a class last February at MI's West Side Comedy Center, and it was amazing. I loved it because I thought going into it, they were sort of going to teach how you tell jokes and things like that. But actually, this class just teaches you how to find your voice. And once you find your voice, the stories will come, and you just kind of trial and error, figure out how to do stand-up. And um, I absolutely love it. Uh, I started doing the first show. We did a show at the end of class, and it was fine. Like we had a a huge audience because everybody brought their friends and I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, this is where I want to go. This is what I love to do. Um, started doing open mics and got, I've gotten called up a lot and you know, like I I will write my material like at work and then I'll just like, Mm -hmm. a lot of it is inspired by like the dating stuff. And a lot of it is like extremely insulting and like very, very vulgar, honestly. Like I, it's funny to me right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a very cleaned up, polished version of myself, but like the things I talk about are disgusting. Um, (laughs) A real comedian. Right, yeah. I mean, you kind of have to really... I mean, but the point, I think, with stand-up is that it you force people to, like, take a look at themselves and realize. Mm -hmm. And and it's super relatable stuff. So I like to be able to... I guess my perspective is strongly, like, a very feminist, like, woman who is just done with everything. But um, the world itself is, like, you go to these open mics, and there's probably, of the dozens of people that perform at them there's probably three or four that are talented or three or four that really know what they're doing and a lot of people who just go up there and like think that they're really funny and start saying offensive things that are not tactful at all and it's it's super entertaining either way but you're sort of like so this is the comedy scene because you hear about la's comedy scene and you hear how um exclusive it is and how hard to make it it is and then you see like that these these beginning these aspiring comedians maybe aren't like I would say 85% of the ones that I'm seeing are probably not in the right career path. And I'm just wondering who has told them for so many years that they're funny, that they should keep doing this. Yeah. Like there's people who don't, these are people who don't work. These are people who they just go to open mics all day, every day. They'll just run around and then they're, they're just hoping somebody sees them. They're hoping to get discovered. And you're like, you're yeah. not, it's not going to happen. Like it's just <sighs> not going to happen. I, I haven't laughed. <sighs> like, and so sometimes I'll just sit there and, I mean, I've been told I'm, like, admittedly, like, very, I'm a tough critic. I'm a bitch about this stuff. And, uh, but there's nights where you sit there and you're like, this is just not funny at all. Um, and then I've gone to some shows where, like, there's openers, um, that are kind of beginners and sometimes they're really good. Sometimes they're terrible. Um, I, it's just this, it's a hit or miss thing and you have to, it's, it's just like the entertainment industry though, as far as working in TV, you have to just 
work the connections and hope for the best. Yeah. But, and you got to get out there, have people videotape you. I only have myself on tape like three times because just whether or not like somebody's there with me or whether or not I feel like, right. whether or not I feel like I'm going to mm. do a good job because sometimes yeah. also you'll realize that you go to an open mic and everyone in the audience is also a comedian. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually, so sometimes if you're performing later in the night, there's no one left. And you're doing uh, your set and there's probably like four people in there and they're just the people that are coming after you. So you're just reading your set to silence. Uh, and it's extremely, that's the, probably the hardest thing to do is stand yeah. up with no laughter. You just, you don't know if you're doing it right because you have to read the crowd and you can't read the crowd if there isn't a crowd. Right, right. So those are the times where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to record myself because nobody's laughing. Right. And exactly. You can't test the material that way at you, all. You yeah. can't. That's the point of an open mic is to test your material. And if you can't get any feedback, what's the point? Like, I'm not going to laugh at myself. So. Right. No. who are some comedians that you fashion your sets after? Anyone inspire I don't, you? That's the thing. I, I like my stand-up uh, teacher was sort of saying that a lot of times people will watch a lot of comedians and then they'll start telling their jokes like them. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. So I just haven't, I don't really watch or listen to stand up mm -hmm. at all. And I just try to keep my voice authentic, I guess. Mm -hmm. But there's, that makes me sound so like, cocky, I guess. No, but, but does your style uh, reflect anyone out there or are you kind of like a new, new type of stand up? I'm not a new type of stand up at all. I'm, I feel like I'm just, I'm, if, I'm probably in the same vein as like Amy Schumer, mm -hmm. just those girls that are like, shameless and yeah. kind of a little disgusting. Um, yeah. It's tough to say because you don't want to put yourself in a box. Oh, that's God, like, no. That's like if someone said, like, what type of podcast is this? Like, right. what other <laughs> show is it like? I'm like, I really don't. It's, You're like, it's, it's original. just my show. Yeah, it's original, but, like, you know, it, yeah. it is what it is. And people, it's great. People have told me on more than one occasion that I remind them of Amy Schumer from Trainwreck, and I'm not sure if that's uh -huh. a compliment or not. <laughs> I would go with no, but... <laughs> Whatever, we'll t I'll take it, I guess. Yeah, why not? I mean, she's making a lot of money. Right, I know. If I, But I mean, it's, that character was probably like <laughs> not <laughs> someone that you want to model your life after. Probably not. Yeah. Whatever, I'm cleaning up my act. I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah. So where are some places that you go to see comedy in the city? Where, where are some uh, good places? Obviously, like Laugh Factory. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right by it. And then Comedy Store. Those Comedy Store is great. MI's West Side is amazing too like if you want to see some really good comedians just kind of fucking around like neil brennan does a show every sunday and it's he was like a co-creator on the Chappelle show and he's okay, he's yeah. so funny and like he'll get his friends to come on and then you're just paying like five bucks to go see these amazing comedians and then i mean nerd melt like the uh what what am i why am i forgetting nerd nerdist like the nerd melt okay yeah. um they have a like a stand-up show I think weekly that's really good too and it's in this like tiny little basement room that's the best thing about LA is like there's also this open mic in uh, Los Feliz in this like Asian restaurant up in the top floor that's just all these like I saw Pete Holmes there like years ago and like some guy who'd been on community in this yeah. tiny Asian restaurant and it's just in this little tiny room where yeah. and you, you never expect to see the kind mm -hmm. of people you see, but that's LA. Like that's right. the beautiful thing about it mm -hmm. is you can go, you, you'll see celebrities anywhere, and yeah. like especially in the comedy scene, you can see really good people um, if you just like keep an ear out for where they're performing. Nice. Yeah. You know, I can really relate to in a lot of things, especially like the business and having that being the main focus of why you're here, how you're paying your bills, yeah. but then discovering these other outlets that save your life. For yeah. me, that was after Buzz TV and then yep. it's moved into this. Now I'm in a better place. But when I was working like that, um, yeah, I mean, I would show up to after Buzz complaining, upset, hungry, exhausted, but I knew I had to do that. Yeah. So I'm sure you, you wanted to. Yeah. It was, for me, it's tough right now because Tuesdays were my day to do open mics and now I play in a soccer league on every mm -hmm. Tuesday so it's like I gotta find a new mic to go to but you know it's another outlet like the sports are another outlet too yeah. cause you just I just need something that I can go do and like not think about right. work yeah <laughs> and just like let out all that aggression and frustration yeah you know what I'm saying yes <laughs> You'll find your way eventually. It's Ugh. just I, someone was telling me that like everything has to line up. Like the person who's in the next job that you're gonna have to have, they need to get another job, so they leave. Yeah. So then you go in there, so it's like literally like 
so much has to happen mm-hmm. that you can't force the issue on these things. No, it's just so. going to have to. I know, and that's sort of the frustration too. Is it's just you can't, you cannot force it, and you cannot make things happen. You just have to sort of be aware, right? Look out for it. Yeah. Well, where can we find you? And is there anything you want to promote? Um, I mean, I have a blog, uh, thechipsidentneed.com. And it's pretty, uh, that's where I'll get a little bit more inappropriate. So, okay. uh, yeah, www.thechipsidentneed.com. No apostrophe after the T or before the T. <laughs> <laughs> uh, check it out. All right. And you guys can check out Grant's Rants coming to Bid Chat, B I D C H A T. The app is out now. Feel free to download it, check it out. I am still waiting on my first air date, but in the meantime, I've been working my tail off getting stuff set the show is going to be a little remixed and it's going to be really exciting so i've been working hard on that i just moved i've got my own place so that's why the show has been a little all over but like i mentioned in a previous episode we're going to be having two new episodes per out oh, per week so make sure you check that out you can keep up with us on our facebook page and of course always on twitter katrina thanks for coming yeah, in yeah thanks for having me of course we'll have you back again yay this has been Grants Rants. Follow us on Twitter at Grants underscore underscore Rants. Cover art created by Howie Rone. Voiceover by Sir Richard Wentworth. Original theme music composed by Alexander Arnson.